finally, finally, it's time to start canning vegetables. So today I'm gonna show you how to prepare and can green beans. I get to start canning my vegetables, preparing things, dehydrating veggies, getting ready for the winter. It's been kind of hectic here though. We just had to take Joshua to work. Um, I have a bird out back that's squawking. I don't know what's going on. I have dogs barking. It's absolutely crazy. But we got all the beans snapped this morning. Um, just to give you like a little background of what we do, um, I'll be posting it in like a little mini vlog. So our tradition is we usually start out by snapping beans first because green beans only have a 45 day maturity. So usually when you start harvesting your garden, the green beans are done first. And so our tradition is we turn the air condition on, but today it's cooler. It's not like super hot like normal. So we turn the air condition on, we start snapping beans and we always watch a Christmas show. And usually the Christmas show we watch is Elf, but Joshy wasn't here and we didn't want to watch it without him because he loves that show. So it was Christmas with the Cranks. So Izzy and Willow snapped the beans. As you can see, I've got my pressure canners ready to go. The beans are in a bowl. Um, the girls put them in water. Um, so I just, I like to double rinse them just to make sure. And then on this side, you guys can't see what I can turn it. Here we go. Um, so I have all my jars ready to go. I have to wash them. Uh, sorry about that, it's kind of bouncy. And then I have my lids have to be washed. My seals have to be sterilized. So um, I'm all ready to go. So just a little tip before we get started is when you are canning, you wanna make sure that you have everything ready to go. You don't wanna be grabbing jars and cleaning things as you go. You just want it to be ready. So I have everything. I've even filled my pot of water. Gonna heat that up. And, um, and I have to get my salt still, but I'm pretty much already set up, ready to go. I've been doing this for so many years that it's just like clockwork for me. Like I know what to get, I know how to do. And, and it's nice because I have so many jars downstairs, like bags and bags of empty candy jars. I'm like, oh my goodness. So um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be um, canning uh, the green beans. I also have bags of potatoes that I have to do. I'm gonna be um, juicing beets and I'm gonna freeze that. I'm gonna be juicing celery and carrots because me and my husband are on like this juice kick. We're trying to cleanse our body. I'm actually day five of eating no sugar and eating no carbs and I actually feel really, really good. Um, so can you tell, can you tell, do I look a little thinner? <laughs> I know you gotta lose a little more weight for people to notice, but I do feel good. Usually when I eat good, I don't sleep. Like I don't need as much sleep as I normally do. Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to get all this fall stuff doing, going. Um, I, I'm re really way behind because of all the traveling I have done and we have one more trip to go and then we're like done school starts. Um, so you probably see this video after school starts, but, um, I'm just a little behind. Um, I planted my garden. I had to plant it three times because nothing grew like the weather was cold and hot and rainy and cold and so the ground was cold it didn't get those seeds germinated um i did get some potatoes i got lots of zucchini of course i have cucumbers coming um, more beans coming um peppers uh we have tomatoes coming so everything is just a little late this year usually i've already canned a lot um, I'm also, we have a friend of ours who has a huge farm. So, um, I did get some beans from them, some potatoes because I want to do a lot. Um, and then also, um, onions. I, my onions did good, but I want to dry my onions this year and put them in a jar. My mother-in-law told me about it. Um, so they'll stay, um, they'll stay longer. You know, they'll, they'll preserve longer. But if you do have carrots, potatoes, and onions, you can actually get like dirt and you can fill bins of dirt and you can stick your carrots and potatoes in them in a root cellar where it stays cold throughout the winter. And you can just keep them in there all winter and just pull them out as you need them. So you don't have to process them if you don't want. I think I'm gonna keep some potatoes and then I'm also gonna can potatoes. And I know I haven't really met anybody who's canned potatoes, but I just tried it years ago and I love it. It's great because you just dump them in soups. I also make scallop potatoes. So when I make scallop potatoes, I just dump them in, you know, in the thing. Um, they're not the greatest for mashed potatoes because mashed potatoes, um, it it's too starchy because it's been in the water for so long when you can them. So it's starchy. So the potatoes aren't as fluffy as you'd like. So they're good for frying. They're good for adding to soups. Um, they're actually 
kind of decent to make potato salad. It just depends. And then of course the scallop potatoes because um, I bake the potatoes so it kind of dries them out a little bit. But um, so anyway, we're gonna get started. I have so much to do today, but my kids all took care of the first part for me. So now I'm gonna show you everything set up, gonna get my jars washed and then start prepping these green beans. So let's go. So I actually have two kinds of beans. I have a green bean and then I don't know what these are called. They're a little flatter, but they're still nice and crispy. Um, so I have two kinds of beans there. And then I have my three canners. I've already filled them with water. So you usually just put like maybe an inch or two of water because you don't want it to be so dry that when you're canning it, your jars break. And then I've already filled my pot of water to put into my beans when I process them. And so they have different tops. And I just want to show you. So they have different tops. Um, with these two, they have a gauge. So it tells you what the pressure is. But with this one, it's a little sneakier. I actually got it from a lady, a friend of mine in church, an older lady. So it takes a weight. And how you know that the pressure is good is it, it'll do this. And it'll be consistent. So it'll consistently, um, I think this is, no, this is it. I was right. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and so as the pressure goes, it will jiggle. And this pops up, which I'll show you guys, but it just jiggles consistently. And that's how you know it's met pressure. If it's too fast, you know the pressure is too much. And if it just does this. So this one's a little trickier. I definitely wouldn't suggest getting one of these until you are a veteran canner. And so then over here, um, oh, and I have my salt because you put like a teaspoon to two teaspoons per quart jar, um, one teaspoon per, per pint. So I have all my jars and you want to make sure that you inspect them, that you make sure that there's no cracks on the tops, on the bottoms. You want to clean them really well. And then I have, I pulled out all of my rings and I go through my rings. And if they do have a lot of rust on them, I'll actually throw them away because they don't seal as well. I have all my, um, my seal, well, this is the rings, and then the, here's the seals, and so I sterilize those seals. There's my Nespresso machine. I just love it. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is start getting these cleaned with hot water. Then I'm going to let them air dry over there and then start getting going on the beans. But once the process starts, it really doesn't take super long. You just kind of have to get into a flow. So that's why it's important to have everything all ready to go so when you start canning, you can just boom, 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 boom. And because, let's come back over here, because I have three canners, um, I can do more. So the taller one, it, it only fits, I believe, six, where these wider ones fit seven or eight. So I would suggest getting a wider canner if you can and get them with the traditional, um, the traditional pressure thing. And then, because it just locks in here. So I believe that this is my traditional one. And then um, this is my other one. I know they look similar, but one, the lids are actually specific for the canners and you'll figure that out too. So, all right, let's get going. Before I get started, I want just to give you a little um, tip on the seals you pick. So these are ball and there also is ball. And then I can't remember what the other one is, but there's two brands that make canning supplies. So when we had the lockdown, and things weren't being made because of all the companies were shut down. I had I found um, lids on Amazon and they were like a no-name brand. And I would just spend the extra money on the branded ones because what I noticed was um, they were the tops. They weren't staying flat. They were kind of bunching up on the top. They were sealing, but it was kind of almost like the top wasn't strong enough. So it was kind of pushing up. And it wasn't because I had too much liquid in it. They're just not... A good quality as the ball is and I can't think what the other name is um, so I I mean this is this is my opinion but I've, I've tried both I've tried the just the no-name cheaper ones and some of them didn't seal some of them popped some of them bent and so you know you don't want to play around with food if you're canning it and it doesn't seal it'll get mold your family will get sick so it's really really important to make sure that the processing of everything is perfection because you're feeding your family and you don't want them to get botulism or, you know what I'm saying? So I personally, I would spend the extra money and get the, the brand ones. There's two brands. I can't think of the second one, but I would get them. Um, you know, I, I have a ton of these that I purchased in bulk and I'm just kind of nervous to use them. So I definitely would go with the ball. And also 
if you're going to become a canner, get extra. Like get some because next year you don't know if they're going to have it. And so if you go there and there's a sale, stock up. If you see jars on sale, stock up. Yeah, you're going to have to find a place to store them. But I'm telling you from experience, one year there's a ton. The next year you can't find anything. So if you get, see them, especially like these seals, just grab them. Grab them. Grab as many as you can. You know, it, it, as many as you financially can. And just store them because... It, it, you just don't know from year to year. And what if you want to can something during the winter and they don't have these out anymore? Because right now they're big, but in the off seasons, you really, it's hard to find them unless you go to like a hardware store. So that is my suggestion. Get the name brand ones because the knockoffs, they don't work as well. They just don't. jars are going to be broken. You're going to tap something. They might come out broken out of the canner. Um, that one jar fell out of my hand and hit another jar and broke. So I had to clean up the whole sink, rinse everything out, move it, clean out the sink, and then bring it all back in to make sure there's like no little pieces. So it is going to happen. You're going to have jars break. You're going to have jars crack on you. You're going to have jars that have tops that are broken and you might take your finger and cut it. So be prepared for broken jars. Be prepared for like little slivers on your finger because it's gonna happen. I did wash my um, green beans in the sink. So now we're gonna start filling these jars. Um, I'm gonna do the green beans first. And it just takes a little time. I mean, usually when I do this, I like to put on like Christmas music or I watch a show. Um, but I'm just gonna fill all of these. And if they also do have like a little, um, uh, like a little, uh, curving them, I do snap them because I want my beans to be straight. And make sure that when you're doing this, that you've checked your jars. See, like these are a little too tall, so I'm just gonna take off the edges and lay it sideways. Um, we just take off the tops. We used to take off the tops and the bottoms, but I don't really feel like there's a need to do that. The bottoms are fine. It's not like it's a stem that's gonna be like, <laughs> you know. So I just fill them like this, go through all my jars. It's very like meditating, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just like super like calming for me to do this. And it's so quiet because all my kids are calm right now. All right, so let's get this first jar going so you guys can see those beautiful, I'm actually gonna bring this over here and kind of defeat the whole purpose of what I'm doing. You want it to be as easy as possible. And I'm not going to fill them with water until they're all done. And I'm not going to get the water in the pressure cooker going until I'm super close to putting them in there. Because if it gets too hot and you put your jars in there, it's too hot, they'll crack. You guys are probably thinking, this is a whole science. Holy cow. But you'll get, once you start, it's nerve, it's nerve wracking. But when you just get going, it's going to be like nothing. All right. Almost done with this one. I am so excited. I have been looking forward to this. I know that's really weird, but... You know, being on vacation so much, it just happened. I had, you know, two weddings to go to and just different things happening in our family. And you don't really appreciate like the cooking and the canning and just like the homestead things until you're gone for so long and you don't get to do it. All right, that looks good. Look at that, how beautiful that is. All right, now we're moving on. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this when these jars get done. I got one bowl of the green beans and now I'm doing these others. I don't even know what they're called, but they're really kind of cool. They're like a purple color. They're a little flatter. So they are a little curvier. So I'm actually having to snap these, but they, um, they're kind of flat. I'm not really sure what I think about them. So I'm just trying to pull out the ones that are curvy and then the ones that are straight I'll put in. Um, I've never had these before. I guess they're really good. Um, they're snappy. Nice. They're just a little flatter. So we'll see, you know, as I'm cooking with them, I'll kind of let you guys know they are kind of cool, you know, they're just kind of, and so I was also thinking as I was snapping these, that if you don't have access to like a pressure canner, but you still want to store up food and stuff, you can actually freeze these. So what would you do? What you do when you freeze them is you do the same. You're going to snap the end off. Um, you can make them small like this if you want. I actually, if you're going to freeze them, I would say keep them whole. Um, 
I mean, unless you're going to do soups and stuff, but as you defrost them, you can, um, you know, you can cut them into pieces. So what you're going to do is you're going to wash the beans just like this. You're going to take the ends off. And then you're gonna grab, um, you're gonna fill a bowl of, or a pan with hot water, like super hot water. You don't wanna fill it all the way up to the top. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna need, oh, those go in there. I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, you need a, a strainer. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to, um, or even like, a, um, like this. Something that you can pull everything out, maybe a spoon that has slots in it, like small slots, but something that you can grab them out. So what you're gonna do is you're going to boil the water, then you're gonna put your green beans, and I wouldn't do a ton at once, I would just do a little bit at a time, and you're gonna put your green beans in there, you're gonna let them boil for maybe, I don't know, maybe five minutes, you know, three to five minutes, not very long because you're blanching, and that's what it's called, blanching. And so after you do that, you're gonna take them out with some kind of tool because you want to drain the water and you're going to fill another bowl up or maybe even your sink clean your sink up and you're going to make it super cold so you're going to have like ice water like really really cold and so you're going to blanch them in that water you know i'd say maybe three minutes and then you're going to take them out and put them into the cold water because you have to stop the cooking process and so you're going to put them into the cold water um, until they are completely cooled. It doesn't take very long if your water's super cold. And you'll know it's super cold because when you put your hands in there, your hands are like, ah, that's so freezing. And, and also too, when I snap my beans, I like to use the, um, the smaller mouth instead of the wide mouth because it just, it just keeps them nicer. When you do the long ones, I like to use the bigger wide mouth ones. Um, so anyway, you're gonna put them in that cold water probably for 15, 20 minutes until they are completely cool. Then you're gonna take them out and you're gonna drain them because you're trying to get out as much water as you can. And then you're gonna put them into baggies, take out all the air, make sure they're as flat as you can get them. And then you're gonna store them into a freezer, put them in a freezer and make sure you keep them flat. So I would you know, make them sideways. I wouldn't do up and down with the bags. And so that's another way that you can store your stuff. You can do that with carrots. You can do that with green beans. I wouldn't suggest doing that with potatoes. You'll probably have mushy potatoes. Um, uh, I know I have some friends that they will freeze onion and celery. I did freeze celery once. It was kind of mushy. I wasn't really, you know, but I, I know that carrots and green beans do that. So that's another way that you can process your garden if you don't have pressure canners. But if you want to invest in a pressure canner, I'm telling you, I've had these for, let's see, I've been married for 28 years this year, 27 years. And I started canning our very first year of marriage. So two of these canners I've had for literally... 26 years and then I was given one by an older lady in our church and she used it and she was in her 80s so she used it for and she gave it to me 10 years ago so it's like 60 years old and so these canners last you take care of it they last and the jars you can just keep redoing the jars so you you empty out your jar you clean it you store it and so you don't have to invest in any jars once you buy them the first time that's it you know, um, and you can store juices. Like my mother-in-law makes juices and she puts them in canning jars and freezes them and it does just fine. So, and when you're doing your beans, if they're not snapping good and they're kind of mushy, you know, and you want to make sure you get your beans out of the garden before they're overgrown because then the, they, the canning doesn't make them better. If they're overgrown, they're still going to be yucky. But so that's just another way if you want to process your garden and have it, um, a lot of people will actually like take the beans out of the green beans and they'll dehydrate the, or they'll dry them and they will store beans in cellars. So if you're not a green bean person, but you use beans for, you know, uh, you know, navy beans, you make soups and stuff. You can also take out the beans and you can dry them or maybe you want to plant them, you know, keep them and plant them next year. So you don't have to buy beans. You can do that too. You can, I don't believe that you can dry your beans and replant them if it's a hybrid. It has to be, it can't be mixed with anything. I think it has to be like a pure just green bean. It can't be a hybrid of a couple different kinds of beans. I believe that's, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that one, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know everything, I guess. So I'm just gonna continue doing this. I just was thinking as I was putting these other beans in, like, you know what, maybe some people can't afford a canner. Maybe they might be afraid. But you can actually get canners at um, like a hardware store. And I believe they're just like a little over $100. I mean, they're not really expensive. 
And then of course you'll need to get the tool that brings your jars out, which you'll see later, the tool to get the water out. So it, it really, you know, it's not a huge investment. Um, a lot of my jars um, on the off season, like this winter, I'll go to Dollar Tree, or not Dollar Tree, but um, Goodwill, and I'll find jelly jars, because I'm telling you, jelly jars are gold. Like, you can barely find jelly jars, they are gold. Um, but I'll go to like Goodwill, and I'll get jars for like 10 cents. And then, I mean, you don't have to buy the seals and the um, the rings, but those aren't much. I mean, it's like $4 for, or $3 for a pack of 12 or whatever. So the investment might be a little bit to start, not much, but it's something that you can just keep, like your rings you can use again. No, you can't use the seals again, um, but your rings you can. And make sure you um, check out your seals too, because I have people that have given me seals and um, they don't realize you can't reuse them. And so I see like little pokes and stuff where they had to release the pressure and it won't reseal. So you can't reuse your seals. And, I, and if you have any question about it, I would just not do it because you're gonna can it and all those hours and then you're like, darn it. And then you'll have to recan it. Cause I've had to do that where um, I left a little bit debris on the ring and I had to redo it. Oh, oh. And you get so tired, like my feet are gonna be sore later because I'm gonna be standing here for hours literally. And to have to redo it, it's like, oh my goodness. So those are cool. I'm anxious to see what they taste like. Okay, I'm gonna continue doing this. When I get done with the jars, we're gonna start putting them in the canners and I can get seven times three. I can get 21 jars in the canners. I got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I have 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. So, um, maybe seven more jars and I'm gonna start pressure canning them. And then as they're pressure canning, then I start filling more jars with beans and salt so they're ready to go, make sure I fill up my water again. I actually turned it off because I'm a little slower than I thought. And the water was getting really hot, you can kind of see the steam. So I'm gonna start it up once I get closer to finishing these jars. And when I come back, um, we're gonna start getting them processed. I got all the jars filled. I still have two bowls left. I have 22 jars here and I use three bowls. So it does take quite a bit of green beans to fill your jars. Whew, I'm a little tired coming from upstairs. I really need to get in shape. So some of them, like I said, I did snap that were kind of curvy. If they're straight up, put them in the jars. So you're also gonna need a funnel. These are really nice. They actually do better on the small mouth. Um, some things I like to do with big mouth and small mouth. The small mouth, I like to do green beans, carrots, um, my scalp potatoes, I like to use the big, the wide mouth. Juices, I like to use the wide mouth. But as you can see, when you put the, the funnels on, they fit way better on the smaller jars than they do the big. I also have a clean washcloth that I got wet because after I fill the jars, I'm gonna make sure that there's nothing on the lids. And then I'm gonna put the seal on, the ring, and I've already got this pressure canner started. So I turned it on low, got my water started again, and it's starting to bubble, so I'm pretty close. So. I'm just gonna do seven to start, get them in the pressure canner so I can show you guys what you do after you do that and then I'll do these these um, after. So I got my little measuring thing. I'm actually gonna bring you guys a little closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing. That is much better. So I'm gonna turn my water off, it's boiling. I'm gonna do these seven and then we're gonna put them into the pressure canner and get that going. So, and you don't wanna fill them up all the way and we're gonna use our little air bubble tool here. So I'm just gonna fill them. I don't fill them up all the way until I have gotten some of the air bubbles out because then you kind of have to take some of the water out. So I'm just gonna fill them all just about halfway. And this water's pretty hot, so it's okay if I you know, go ahead and just do them all fast and see how everything's dripping. I mean, this place is gonna be wet, 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 wet. And I also get more of one. So like I have three um, holders to bring jars out. I have two filter or two funnels because you just don't know. You just don't know. And I had one year where I couldn't find my funnel and oh my goodness, I had a complete mess. My husband's like, oh wow. And also they're gonna be hot. So I guess you gotta be careful with your countertops too. If you just have like, I just have like a regular laminate. It's nothing special. Um, and try pouring them where the bottom is over the gla the other glass, so when it drips, it'll just drip into the other glass. I mean, kind of makes sense, I guess. So yeah, it's gonna be a, a hot mess here soon. All right. Get a little bit more in here. And now I'm just, I'm gonna put a little bit more water in them. 
when you get to doing like relishes and tomatoes and stuff, you just have to really be careful to clean off the tops because if there's any kind of debris, um, they will not seal. All right, so now you're just gonna take the edge here and you're just gonna go down and just get all the bubbles out. Oh, it's kind of hot, so I'm not gonna be able to touch the bottom, but. And it'll also loosen up the green beans, so like if you are snapping them smaller, as you put this in there to get rid of the air bubbles, there's gonna be a little more room for beans. So you can stick more beans if you want in there. I mean, you don't wanna do them too tight, so there's like no area between them, because then, you know, you put them too tight and that's when things kinda don't go well. Oh, this popped out on me. But so far, these look pretty good. I mean, I could, probably could put some more beans in them if I want to, but I think I'm just gonna keep them as it is. All right, let's get this one done here. And then after I get all the air bubbles out, I am going to add more water. So now you're gonna take your rag, and then this is a clean rag, and just wipe the tops. And be careful because sometimes I found chips in the top of my jars, and I go to do this and cut, yeah. And I also use my finger just to make sure because sometimes there's maybe old like little sticky parts from when you used them before. I've already cleaned my lids, put them in a bowl. Here we go. And you're just gonna put the lid seals on here. I guess I didn't grab enough out. There we go. And then just start putting your lids on. I mean, it's super easy. Once you get a flow going, it goes fast. And then once you get one going, um, once you get one going, as they're processing, that's when you start preparing other ones. But I mean, I have, if you only have one canning jar, you know, one canner, you wanna get your load going right away. If you only have one canner, I wouldn't get all of them filled like that. I would do the seven that it fits. And then as those are processing, then work on this other one. So as those go out, more can come in. So I'm gonna set them inside the canner and you want your water kind of hot. So when you put your jars in, they're hot too. I'm gonna move this out of my way. And you don't want your jars, you don't want your jars to touch the top or the sides of the canner or each other because as you see, you'll see when we get the canner going, oh, it looks like this one only fits. No, I think I can do it. I haven't canned in so long. Okay, I'm gonna have to just adjust these. So you don't want them to touch each other or touch the sides. So you wanna space them out a little bit to where they, if they rattle against each other, it's okay. All right, so I got them in there and see they're kind of touching, but not really. This one, I can probably move the middle over. So you want them so they aren't touching each other or barely touching each other or touching the sides because as they can, as the pressure increases, they're going to move a little bit and as they're hitting each other, you don't want the jars to crack. So now we're gonna get the top on and get this first batch going. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this because um, you want it at least this much over the jars to keep it you know, wet. So I got the jars in, so all you do is you're gonna line up, hey you guys, you're gonna line up the arrow with the side. You're gonna put it on, and now I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit here. Okay, and so now it's starting to do, <laughs> ignore them too, it's starting to do pressure, and so we're not gonna put this on until the pressure builds up, and we're gonna see this little thing come up that, that signifies that the pressure has started. Then we're gonna put this on. So it's gonna probably take maybe about 10 minutes to get to temperature so we can start doing the next process. So as that's going, I'm gonna get these other two going and then we'll continue with this one. The steam is coming out consistently. That means that the temperature's hot enough and it's ready to start the process of pressurizing these jars. So I'm just gonna put the weight on there and that's what's gonna build the pressure. And once this release comes up, then it's gonna start um, increasing the gauge. And usually I start my timer when it hits 10 to 12 pounds. Um, you definitely wanna make sure you watch it because you don't want it to get you know, into this caution because then your canner will possibly explode. So um, I got the weight on, pressure is now starting and we're gonna know 
that the gauge is going to start going up when we get that release there. And yes. Okay, so now the pressure is starting to build in the canner. I'm going to watch the gauge. We're going to see it start to go up slowly. And then when it hits the 10 to 12 is when I'm going to start tying and see how it's going up. Yeah, and we got one pound of pressure. So the pressure is at 12. Um, I don't like to go over 15. I try and turn my temperature down if it does start to go over that. Um, and I did set a timer for 35 minutes. So it's been going for five minutes. So once it hits the time that I want, then all I do is I move it off of the burner and let it cool. And you don't wanna take the weight off of it until it is at zero because you don't want your pressure canner to explode. Um, so I'm gonna let this go for another 35 minutes. We'll come back, take it off the burner and then just let it cool. And then I'll show you the finished product. I want to show you guys this older canner that I got from a lady in my church. So see how it's not going too fast or too slow. It's just consistent. So that's how I know to start the timer for the 35 to 40 minutes of pressure. Um, and then this one here is the steam starting to go in it. So we're gonna get that one on and that one will be going. Um, so yeah, these older ones. And then they come with weights to add five to 15 pounds of pressure. You just slowly add them to this. So that's perfect. If it goes any faster, then I'm gonna have to turn the heat down um, because that means that the pressure's getting too high. I would not recommend getting an older one. I would get one that shows you the gauge. I think it's a lot safer, a lot easier, especially if you're starting out. This one is almost ready to be done. Um, I have two that I've completed that are cooling. And then you can hear this one right here. So that one has about 20 minutes left and I'm watching my favorite show, Crazy Rich Asians. I love that show so much. It's just so sweet and so funny. But anyway, I forgot to tell you guys, make sure when you're canning that you get a fan because it is gonna be so hot. Just with all the burners going, I mean, it gets really, really hot. And so my little marker that tells me that the pressure is ready to put the weight, put the, I'm sorry about that. Oh, ah, crazy runaway camera. Um, so it's, it's gone down. My pressure is now down to zero. So now I can take the weight off. And what I like to do is I can actually open it if I want, but the jars are kind of still processing. And so I find that, I know I'm trying to talk over this. Um, let me come back when this is done so I can continue talking to you guys and explain to you about the, what's going on inside the pressure canner right now. Now that it's a little quieter, I thought I could continue explaining to you. So even though the pressure is out of it, it still is really hot. So I like to use this vent. I want it to steam and kind of cool off a little bit inside. Um, probably about 15, 20 minutes, I just let it set. Um, it's not on the burner it was cooking on. So, you know, we had taken off the hot burner. Um, so even though the pressure's off, I don't want to open it yet because the jars are still really hot. And so if you take the lid off too soon and just like let it, all the steam just rush out, you're going to notice all the liquid in your jars is going to kind of bubble up and it's going to kind of go out of the jar. It'll kind of seep over. So I like it to cool off a little bit before I open it. And then um, when I do open it, I just kind of crack it and kind of set it down because I don't want the steam to come out too much, too fast. Um, because I think sometimes if, if the pressure or if you open it and, the, and it comes out too fast, sometimes the jars will break or crack. Or like I said, they'll bubble over um, and then you'll have liquid all over it's the place. It's been about probably 25 minutes and it's really hot, so be careful when you touch it. So I'm just gonna open it up and just kind of crack it. Oh, see how there's lots of steam coming out and I can already hear the jars kind of bubbling. So I think, I don't know, they look pretty good. Okay, we're gonna take them out. Sometimes when you grab the jars, like here's your little jar holder. So you wanna, this is the handle, you wanna grab it just from the lid and you're gonna pull it up. Isn't that beautiful? And then you're gonna set them over there. So they look gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. And they're not bubbling too much. Sometimes when you pull them up, you'll see lots of bubbles come up and the water starts coming out. Um, there's always, you're gonna have a little bit of, because as they're expanding, some of the liquid's gonna come out. So your water is gonna probably smell like green beans, but you know, just keep using it. And then when you're done, just go ahead and clean the, the, the um, your pressure canner. So I'm gonna get these put over there. I actually have two pots that are done. So let me move you guys so you guys can see me put the product out. 
I have two canners that I can get the jars out of. This one, the pressure isn't completely out of it, so that one we're not gonna take care of. But, so this one I opened a little earlier because I want, or earlier than you're supposed to because I want you guys to see. So if you open it too soon, see all the bubbles? And it actually will be like, psh, you know, kind of hear it, kind of going out of the jars. So this one should have been a little bit more, but I wanted you guys to see how it still has lots of bubbles. That means it's still kind of settling and sealing. And then as they're sitting here, you're gonna hear them pop. Oh, I wonder if we'll be able to catch some of that. You're gonna hear them pop, and that is them sealing. You'll hear it like that. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited for this. So the green beans look beautiful. These other ones, I mean, maybe they're a form of a wax bean, I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna do a double duty here. Probably getting uh, ahead of myself here. That's what happened when I was washing the jars. I was going too fast, that's why one of them broke. And be careful with the wider mouth ones. Uh, my friend, uh, Lacey, who she's the one that wanted me to do this video. She's like, please make a video because I want to start canning. I'm like, okay. Um, she just brought me tons of corn. My corn did not grow. And there's a local farmer that got good corn. And so I'm going to be processing the corn here probably, I don't know, maybe in a couple days. You guys will be able to see that. Okay. First batch of green okay. beans out. It's official. I have finished my two boxes of green beans. And I have gotten two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 20, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48 jars of green beans. It, I started at noon and it is now 7:10. <laughs> I am so happy. I am really tired. I even made dinner and made protein snacks for my son, Robert, which you're gonna see that too. Um, I'm just so excited because I was really worried about not getting my canning done. I have two jars of green beans left from last year. Um, I have no carrots, no potatoes. So coming up carrots, I just got tons of corn. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me on Candy 101, Candy Green Beans. And listen, you got this. Don't be nervous, don't be nervous. You can do it. It's easy, it's simple, I gave you lots of tips. You got it. If you have any comments or questions on this, you can message me if you need you know, help or you need a tip. Music to my ears, the popping. You guys are hearing it firsthand, how they are sealing. The pop means they're sealing. So they look so beautiful, look at this. Beauty, I should put this in a fair. I would win firsthand. Okay, well thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to Just the Bells 10 and look out for fall stuff, recipes. I have a budget recipe coming up that I should have put on already, but I've been so busy. But don't worry, you're gonna see it here soon. Um, and you're gonna see more canning. I'm gonna be um, processing onions differently. I'm going to be making more of my um, sun-dried tomatoes, more pickled onions. I mean, I got so many things I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be making juice and freezing it. I'm so excited. So anyway, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe and like to see all this cool stuff. All right, thank you very much. If you have any questions, just comment below. All right, we out.